Cinnamaldehyde is the chemical that gives cinnamon its characteristic flavor and odor. Not only does cinnamaldehyde have its obvious use as a flavorant, but it can also be used as an antimicrobial or as a fungicide. It occurs naturally in the bark of cinnamon trees, and this is where we're going to be extracting it from. To do this, we'll be carrying out what is known as a steam distillation. For this experiment, I used 25.5 grams of cinnamon sticks and about 300 milliliters of DCM. However, it should be noted that almost all of the DCM is recycled and recovered at the end. Cinnamon sticks are broken into smaller pieces and placed into a mortar. Using the pestle, the pieces are crushed into smaller bits. Keeping the bits moderately sized and not powderizing them keeps the foaming during the distillation to a minimum. If powdered cinnamon were used, we might need to use a surfactant in order to prevent the foam from reaching the still head. After the cinnamon had been crushed, 25.5 grams were added to a 3 necked round bottom flask. To this was added 200 milliliters of distilled water. Then, 100 milliliters of water was added to an addition funnel attached to one of the necks. However, this extra 100 milliliters of water really isn't that necessary. The round bottom flask was then heated very lazily by directly touching it to a hot plate. I then placed a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder to catch the distillate. During the distillation, there will be a lot of bubbling, just make sure that there is no foaming. When the distillation is started, you'll notice a cloudy distillate traveling down your condenser column. 100 milliliters of this cloudy distillate was collected. The distillate is cloudy because it contains an insoluble suspension of cinnamaldehyde oil. This is because as the water mixture boils, both the water and the cinnamaldehyde vaporize and the vapors travel up towards the condenser. Although they're mixed in vapor form, when they condense, the insoluble cinnamaldehyde will phase separate out of the water. Because there are so many small little droplets of oil suspended in the water, it appears as though it's cloudy. For this reason, the level of cloudiness is a good indication of how much oil is in suspension, so the more clear the distillate is, the less oil that is present. With this information, you can get an idea of when you should stop the distillation. After 100 milliliters of this cloudy distillate was collected, it was transferred to an Erlenmeyer flask. At this point, most of the cinnamaldehyde oil has been extracted, but I decided to collect a further 100 milliliters of distillate. To do this, I slowly dripped in 100 milliliters of water from the addition funnel. The addition funnel allows us to add water while keeping the distillation going, but you could also pour in 100 milliliters of water and just heat the mixture up again. You'll notice that this next batch of distillate is clear, which indicates a low concentration of cinnamaldehyde oil. Nonetheless, it was combined with the previous distillate. The distillate was then transferred to a separatory funnel. 60 milliliters of DCM was used to wash the Erlenmeyer flask, which was then added to the separatory funnel. The separatory funnel was capped and shaken vigorously, and the layers were allowed to separate, and the bottom DCM layer was drained into a flask. This process was repeated four more times, also using 60 milliliters of DCM each time. After the final washing, the upper aqueous layer was clear, indicating that most of the cinnamaldehyde had been removed. The DCM washings were poured back into the separatory funnel, dried using saturated sodium chloride solution, and then drained into a flask containing calcium chloride. The calcium chloride was vacuum filtered off, and the solution was drained directly into a round bottom flask. The calcium chloride remaining in the flask was washed with a small amount of DCM. Another distillation was carried out to recover the DCM. When all of the DCM had been removed, the yellow oil which remained was transferred to a dram vial. After all this work, I was left with nearly pure 0.5 grams of cinnamaldehyde. An HNMR of the final product shows that it is decently pure.